right, I just ran into Jolly and uh, we we're talking about some threat intelligence. He's now a uh, senior consultant with Threat Grid and uh, he's got some pretty cool analytics to talk about. Uh, Jolly, what's going on? So here's the thing. One of the key things a defender has over an attacker is data. But the problem is you can only collect so much data on your own organization. So what we end up doing with ThreatGrid is we've got this malware cloud analysis platform that's analyzing samples not just from you, but from all of our customers, from our partners, and this entire threat intelligence space. What that ends up meaning is we're analyzing hundreds and thousands of samples on a day-to-day -day basis, which is fun, but the fun really starts coming in when you start mining that, that data and that relationships, seeing how one sample relates to another, seeing, hey, one day this sample's talking to this command and control IP, another day it's downloading different secondary stages, and seeing how that all relates. One of the big problems historically is if you look at a threat intelligence feed, well, they'd go, this information is bad, this IP is bad, you should block that. The problem with that is that's not very actionable. I need to know as a defender, not just that you think this is bad, but why do you think it's bad, how long do you think it's been bad for, and give me all that historical context and relationships behind that. Okay, that's, when, you, when you put all these pieces together then, what's, what's the next step? So the next step is really starting to leverage that into your security operations lifecycle. You can take that intelligence and use it at different stages, whether you're using it to go, okay, I've got incoming attacks, I've got incoming network traffic. Huh, let me see what else have I seen from this in the past, and not just me, but that global information set, and also sitting there and doing it at all stages. You can apply that same information when you're doing post-incident response, whether I'm like looking at things on a host level, going, how rare is this binary? That's useful information. Okay, so you start seeing these patterns. Does that help you track down other attacks that, that might have been slipping by your defenses? So one of the really nice things about that is you start using it as a multifaceted strategy. Traditionally in security, we like blocking the attack. We like blocking the exploit, which is useful, but you and I know there's always new attacks out there. What you start doing is being able to fingerprint not just the attack, but the attacker and their command and control information, their channels. And you start increasing the cost from an attacker standpoint. And if you think about it, traditionally as an attacker, I spent a lot of time on the attack side. I would sit there, scan a whole range, and you could reuse the same exploit, that same attack over and over. It's only when you have organizations starting to share that information that you start being able to defend more effectively and increase the costs for the attacker. Okay, now that, that brings us to a good point. Uh, uh, you know, information sharing, of course, is, uh, is a big topic right now. Uh, Public-private partnerships and stuff, uh, we're looking at trying to uh, do increased sharing in the ICS uh, Definitely. field stuff. Uh, what, what is the value? I mean, a lot of people, of course, don't want to you know, share information. They're worried about uh, compromising some of their intellectual property, uh, confidentiality, uh, uh, sovereignty. So here's the thing. There's this trade-off. One of the things I've really liked over the last few years is you've seen more organizations willing to step up and go, yes, I had an incident, here's the information I had about that. And that ultimately ends up helping the defender. Because now it's no longer just, oh, I've got this dirty laundry, let me ignore it. Or rather, let's proactively look at those problems. But one of the key important things you talked about there is having this trusted partner base. You don't want to just necessarily publish all the full technical information to everyone out there. But having other trusted companies, partners within your own industry or within the security industry that you can talk to and share that information is incredibly valuable from a defense standpoint. Excellent. Jolly, thanks for taking the time. No problem. It's been us. a pleasure.